Trains, Part 1. Hi, I'm Daniel Souza, and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is Part 1 on Lecture on Trains. Now, problems in trains seem like a nightmare for students, but this is because they don't actually know the theory behind it. So we might not be able to solve a sum in this lecture, but I can assure you that after watching this lecture, you will definitely be able to solve any problem on trains. Let's get started. All right, now to understand the problems on trains, you need to go through four concepts. So we've got conversion, we've got distance formula, we've got relativity, and we've got train theory. Let's look at these one by one. All right, now for conversion, what they basically do is in most problems, they'll give you some speed in kmph, that's kilometers per hour, and they will ask you to convert it to meters per second, right? Now, this is also MPS, but we usually write it in this notation, and kmph we write in this notation. Now, everybody knows that we have to multiply it by 5 by 18 or 18 by 5. No one really knows. We keep getting confused. And if you make the wrong mistake, it's all wrong. So what we'll do is we will simply derive the formula so that you won't have to remember it. Now, to convert some x kilometers into y meters per second, right? what we do is we'll just con convert kilometers into meters and per hour into per second. So how many meters make one kilometer? 1,000, right? So we'll have to multiply x into 1,000. So kilometers has changed to meters. And now r has changed to seconds. Now one hour has 60 minutes. Each minute has 60 seconds. So an hour will have 60 into 60, right? 60 minutes and each minute has 60 seconds. Now just simplify it. You've got one zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, right? So it's equal to, so y, is equal to basically x into 10 divided by 6 6 are 36 2 5 are 2 18 are. so when you want to convert something from kilometers per hour to meters per second right from kmph to meters per second you multiply it by 5 by 18 and when you want to convert meters per second into kilometer into kilometers per hour you will multiply it by 18 by 5. Right? Conversion check. All right, now for the distance formula, you basically have this. D is equal to S into T. D is your distance, S is your speed, and T is your time. Now, this is one of those universal formulas that can be applied to anything. So, suppose you have a guy who's running, right? Yeah. So, this is the track. Now, if you tell me that he's starting here, right? And you tell me that he's been running for two hours, Right? You ask me to find where he is. And if you give me his speed, I just need to multiply the time and the speed, right? S into T. And I will get the distance at where he will be found. So similarly, if you're riding a bike at say 60 kilometers per hour and you're riding for four hours, right? So how do you know what distance you've covered? Just multiply it, these 60 kilometers per hour into four hours. So R and R gets cancelled. So you have 60 into four, that is 240 kilometers. Distance formula, check. All right, now relativity is a very broad term, but to understand concepts in trains, let's see an example. Now, suppose that you're in a car, right? And you're riding on a highway, and on the opposite side, there's a bus that's going at around 40 kilometers per hour. Suppose your speed is 60 kilometers per hour. All right, now you're riding in this direction and the bus is coming the other direction. Now, you've obviously seen this happen. When you're on a highway, and you're riding in one lane and you've got a bus coming in the opposite direction or a car or whatever, right? You know your speed. You're on 60 and you know how fast it goes. When you're looking at the other bus, right? It's going faster than you. You're definitely sure it's not 60. It's definitely higher than 60. Now, the same case, it doesn't matter if this is at 20 or 10 kilometers. You will obviously see it faster than you. And that is where the theory of relativity applies. Now, what it says is basically, it says that when you're moving, and some object is moving in the opposite direction as you, you will not see the speed of the object for what it is. You will see it as the addition of both your speeds. So here, if the bus was coming at 40 kilometers, you would see it as 60 plus 40. So you would see it zoom by at 100 kilometers, even though it's not at 100 kilometers, right? So if it was at 20 kilometers, you would see it move at 80. If it was at 10 kilometers, you would see it as 70 kilometers. Now, a similar case applies when you're both moving in the same direction. When you're both moving in the same direction, theoretically, right? Suppose your one car is moving at 60 kilometers and the other car is also moving at 60 kilometers. Now, if there was no surrounding around you, right? Theoretically, if there was no friction, nothing at all, at every point, you would be in line with each other. So if, suppose, um, if you've got two cars, right? Best, 
if you've got a train, right? This usually happens in trains. When you're sitting in a compartment and you've got another train at the side of you and both of them start, when you're looking out of the window of the train, you can't see anything else but the other train. The environment is completely blocked. So if both the trains move at the same time, if it was not for the vibrations, you would feel that the car, uh, that the carriages are stationary. The trains are moving, but you would see the other person right there. So you believe that you're not moving, right? So when you're both in the same direction, then if your speed is say X and the other guy's speed is Y, you will see it as X minus Y. This is the relative speed because they're both moving in the same direction. So in the train example, when you, if your train is moving at 60 kilometers per hour and the other train is also moving at 60 kilometers per hour, it will seem that both of you are not moving because you will see it as zero, he will see it as zero. So you'll both face each other and it will seem that you're both stationary. Whereas if the trains were moving in the opposite direction, if you were moving at 60 kilometers and this guy also was moving 60 kilometers, you will zoom past each other and, and this fellow will think that this train is going at 120 and this fellow will think that this guy is going at 120. Relativity, check. All right, train theory. Now, suppose we've got a train of length L and say this is a pole. Now, you want to know after how much time the train will cross the pole. So if you take an example of two people running, right, say this is A and he's running this direction and you've got B, right, who's running in the same direction. Now, you will say A crossed B when he moves ahead of B, right, or when B moves behind him. So similarly, you will see the train has crossed the pole when the pole is essentially behind the train. Now the pole is stationary, right? So a very important concept in trains is that never look at the front edge of the train, always look at the back edge. So you want this to be here. This is your train, right? So once it is in this position, you will say that it is past the pole. So basically this edge has to come here. So it needs to travel a distance of L. So if you have a train of L meters and you have a pole, the time taken for it to cross the pole is the time required for the train to travel L meters. Right? Now, similarly, assume this wasn't a pole. Suppose this was a building, right? If you've got a building, right? Now, say this building or a wall or whatever you want is of length B. Now, for the train to cross this wall or building, it needs to come here. The, the bottom of the train should come here. It starts from here, right? So this edge has to come here. So if you plot it down, you've got length L, it needs to travel first and then it will come here. And from here to here, it needs to travel another additional distance of B. So for the train to cross a building of length B and if the train is of length L, then it will take the amount of time that the train takes to travel a distance of L plus B. All right, now I hope that wasn't too confusing because we've got something more confusing coming up. So we've got two trains now, they're moving in the opposite directions and this is of length A and this is of length B. Now this train is moving at a speed of U kilometers per hour in this direction and this one is moving at a speed of V kilometers per hour in this direction. Now a very common sum in trains is that they tell you that two trains of length A and B moving at speeds U and V in the opposite direction is a scenario. So what is the time taken for these two trains to cross each other? So basically what they're asking you is, if this is train of length A and this is train of length B, right? When will they cross each other? So when will this edge and this edge coincide, right? Or pass each other. So basically the bottom edge here and this edge, when will it cross each other? That is technically when both the trains have crossed. Now, if you've paid attention to two minutes back, right? Place yourself here. Okay. I'm asking this train to be stationary. You are here. Now, if I ask you to calculate after how much time will the train be cross this line, right? You will say, okay, I'll apply the distance formula, right? So D is equal to ST. So time will be D by S. Now, what is the distance here that this edge has to travel? B, right? That's the length of the train. And what speed it travels is B. So you will say T is equal to B by B. Fine. Now I will ask you to come and stand here and look at this train. Similarly, you will say that the time is equal to A by U, right? B by S, A by U. Now, what is happening is now I will ask you to jump in this train, right? Now, if I ask you to calculate the time, you will come up with T is equal to A divided by U plus V. Now, why is this additional factor of plus V there? It's because of the example in the relative T exam, example that I gave earlier, right? When you're moving this direction with the speed of V and something else is moving 
at the speed of u in the opposite direction, you will see it moving at the speed of u plus v, right? So your new time here will be a divided by u plus v. Now, I'll ask the train to start again here, and I will ask you to jump inside here now, right? If I again ask you to recalculate, you will come here with the new time as b divided by v plus u. Similarly, so the, in actuality, the time required for these two trains to cross each other will be the addition of these two times. So time will be equal to a divided by u plus v plus b divided by v plus u. Now u plus v and v plus u is the same thing. So essentially the answer or the formula you can say is a plus b divided by u plus v. This is the time required for these two trains of length a and b moving at speeds u and v respectively in the opposite direction to cross each other. Now, similarly, as the theory of relativity says, if they're both moving in the same direction, the formula would be a plus b divided by u minus v, right? All right, so just to recap, we know that when the trains move in the opposite direction, the time taken for them to cross each other will be to is equal to a plus b divided by u plus v. Now, similarly, if they're both moving in the same direction, we've got TS, right? The time required for the faster train to overcome and cross the slower train. So TS will be equal to A plus B divided by U minus V. Train theory, check. All right, so this was part one on lecture on trains. Now, I know that the theory can be a little confusing. So what I want you to do is go back and watch the entire video again. If you found it a little tough, make sure you leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. In the second lecture, we'll start solving problems. If you found this video helpful, do make sure you give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. I'd also appreciate it if you share it on Facebook and told your friends about it. Cheers. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get notification of any videos that I release. I make new videos every Thursday. Until then, spread the knowledge.